Hey guys, Jamil here from Auto Industria, and what I have right here are two of the freshest 4x4 PP Vs around. This is the 2023 Isuzu Muex LSE 4x4, and this is the 2023 Nissan Terra Sport VL 4x4. These are top of the line models, and these two share very similar purposes. But now that we have both together, let's see how these two will compare. Let's start things off with the MUX. Since this was launched a few years back, this current generation of the MUX has gone from a rugged 4x4 look to something that's more upmarket or something that's more family friendly. You see it with the sculpted lines and the 20 inch wheels it is wearing. The latest update brought this new color, the Norwegian blue, along with a few changes to the accents as well as the wheels. Meanwhile, on the other side, we have the Terra Sport VL 4x4. And this one still has that rugged 4x4 look. You know, back when it was launched, we were calling this one the Baby Patrol. And even more so, it looks more like a patrol with this new update. They have the black accents on the grill, the under garnish, the side mirrors. And with this stealth pearl gray color that's also special to the VL4x4, it has a nice accent to the 18-inch wheels that's also colored in gloss black. Both of these 4x4 SUVs are powered by turbo diesel engines, but let's start off with the MUX. This one is a 3-liter 4-cylinder unit, and the Terra Sport has a 2.5-liter unit. Both have the different displacements, but they do produce the same amounts of power and torque, 190 PS and 415 Nm of torque. The MUX is paired to a 6-speed automatic transmission, while the Terra Sport is paired to a 7-speed automatic transmission and both are four-wheel drive. So really, there's not much difference between the two. But now it's time for something new. Let's bring out the decibel meter. Now let's start off with the MUX. Actually, the MUX has a remote start function, but we can't really turn the engine on because the hood is up. So luckily, we have our good friend Nico to help us out. Nico, please start the engine. There we go. So right now, I have this decibel meter right here. And it says the 3-liter engine of the MUX is doing around... Oh, that's pretty loud. That's 80 decibels. And now, let's move over to the Terra Sport. And now, it's time to test how quiet the Terra Sport engine is. Nico, can you help me out again? So we have the decibel meter right here. And it says it's reading around 73 decibels. So the Nissan engine is much more quieter than the MUX. So here at the back is where we see a much clearer picture between the size differences of these two models. The Terra Sport is longer and is much taller than the MUX, but the MUX is wider and it has a bit more ground clearance than the Nissan. Also, another difference between the two are the LED tail lamps, which have different, of course, different designs, and they extend to the trunk. One more difference, this is made of plastic, this is made of metal. So, I have the remote of these two models, but let's see which trunk will open first. And just like my previous walk around, the MUX has a power tailgate and has a smart sensor, but the Terra Sport well, you have to do it on your own. So let's start off with the MUX. Now that we've opened the trunk of the MUX, you can see there's a flat cargo area. And with the third row seats up, you have about 16 inches of length from here to there. With the third row seats down, you have about 45 inches of length plus 44 inches of width. And if you need more space, you can fold the second row seats down and you get around 68 inches of length. Now let's move over to the Terra Sport. As I mentioned earlier, the Nissan Terra Sport does not have a power tailgate. So you have to do it by yourself. And once you pop open the trunk, this one has a very interesting feature. See the trunk right here? You know, this one has an elevated point. So this one serves as your hidden cargo hold for things you don't want people to see. Plus, 
This one serves so that you have a flat loading area. From this point up to this point is around 20 inches. And once you fold the third row seats, you have about 45 inches of length plus 45 inches of width. And when you do fold the second row seats down, that's about 75 inches of length. So it has better length than the Mu X. Now let's check what's inside both vehicles. Let's start things with the third row of the Isuzu Mu X. And the first thing you'll notice once you get here, you have a bit of limited leg room, but you do have enough headroom and enough elbow room if you're as tall as me. And unfortunately, you can't move these second row seats forward since they don't have a sliding function. What you do get is an easy lift tab in order to get out of the third row a bit easier. We also have overhead AC vents here at the third row, plus two cup holders on either sides. Here at the second row of the Mu X is where things start to get a little more interesting. For one, you have a Twitter right here, plus a speaker here for a total of six speakers all around the vehicle. Also, you have a multi-purpose hook for all sorts of stuff. Here at the center, you have a 220 volt power outlet where you can plug your laptops, your tablets, and other sorts of devices. You have two USB charging ports right here. Here in the middle, you also have an armrest. And you can pull this to get your own cup holders. At the top, you have these overhead AC vents and the controls for it. But one thing you'll notice is that the Mu X doesn't have the monitor in the second row anymore. The previous generation had it, but for this generation, they removed it. Compared to the previous generation Mu X, the current generation model has really leveled up in terms of cabin features. You now have leather accents, soft touch panels even on the dashboard, and this nice contrast stitching on the dashboard. You have this nice leather steering wheel and these metal accents in the middle. You have the controls for the infotainment screen in this side. On the other side, you have the controls for the adaptive cruise control. And here we have the massive touchscreen infotainment that also displays the clinometer. So if you're going off-road, you can see the pitching, the rolling, it even has its own altimeter. This particular screen also supports Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, so all well and good. So below it, you have a dual zone climate control system with these piano-like controls. So if you're going to adjust, it's very easy. Underneath, you have the ports for your aux wires and another USB charging port. You also have a 12-volt charging outlet right here. But unfortunately, this doesn't have wireless charging. So this place is better off for your smartphones or your wallets, you know, that sort of stuff. So we have this shifter right here, which feels nice to the touch. You know, it's an automatic, so you have PRND right here and a manual mode. On the left side of it is your controls for the hill descent and traction control button. On the right side, you have empty buttons, but it can be useful for future applications such as auxiliary lights and even a winch. So below it, you have an electronic parking brake plus the auto brake hold function, which is very useful, especially when you're in traffic. You also have the button right here for the terrain mode and the rotary switch for the too high, for high, and for low. So you have the cup holders right here and the armrest that has the compartment that has generous space. So that's about it here at the first row of the Mu X. Let's hop over to the Terra Sport. So now we're here at the third row of the Nissan Terra Sport. And as you can see, I still have a bit of leg room, I have comfortable elbow room, and I still have a bit of headroom for my size. But as for the seating position, I've noticed there's a bit of an issue. The wheel wells are actually protruding, so I don't have quite a comfortable seating position. I have one knee higher over the other, so on longer trips, this might be an issue for the occupants at the back. But there's something interesting here at the third row of the TerraSport. Aside from the AC vents, which you see, plus the cup holders, it actually has an HDMI port here and a USB charging port. So the HDMI port actually connects to the monitor that's at the second row. And one more thing, 
third row occupants of the Terra Sport can actually get out a bit easier compared to the Mu X because it has power folding second row seats like that one. Pretty clever. Okay, so we're here at the second row of the Nissan Terra Sport. And one of the first things you'll notice is that it has theater design seats. So you're seated much higher than the first row. So if you're a bit taller and your driver is a bit shorter, you can actually see the road ahead. Also, you have these center armrest with cup holders here, cup holders also on the door cards. Plus you get USB type C charging port here, plus regular USB port for charging as well. You, uh, these AC vents below plus AC vents above. You also have the AC controls here at the top. And the unique thing about the Nissan Terra Sport is that it has this monitor right here. So you can actually play uh, movies, all that sort of stuff while you're traveling inside the Nissan Terra Sport. Let's move over to the front. Okay, so we're now at the driver's seat of the Nissan Terra Sport, and it's actually a very nice place to be in. You have leather almost everywhere. Armrest, the seats, the door cards, even this D-cut steering wheel, which has baseball stitching. It also has the controls for the infotainment system and the cruise control function. The instrument cluster is a combination of analog and digital. The middle one is for the multi-information display, and this is where you can see there's an inclinometer plus the 4x4 system. So now, right now we're at too high, so it says 4x2 right there. Also have fuel economy, your speed, and also the controls for the ADAS system. So the forward collision warning, blind spot monitoring, and the lane keep assist. Moving on. The infotainment system has a nice display. It also shows the 360 degree around view monitor. So it has the reverse camera plus a bird's eye view of the Nissan Terra Sport. This one also has um, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Below the infotainment system, you have a dual zone climate control system, 12 volt power outlet, type C and USB charging ports, the rear air cooler, and the control for the four-wheel drive system. So you have two-wheel drive, four high, and you have to push it to four low. You also have wireless charging right here. Shifter is nice to the touch. Plus, it also has the sequential function, which we'll test a bit later. You have the controls for the power folding second row seats, the rear differential lock. You also have this button right here for hill descent control, and you also have an electronic parking brake. The Nissan Terra Sport also has eight speakers provided by Bose. So for listening experience, that's gonna be pretty good. But we're raring to drive the Nissan Terra Sport, so let's take it out for a spin. I know that some of you guys have been waiting for us to do a 4x4 showdown between the Mu X and the Terra Sport in our favorite playing around, but unfortunately the weather did not permit us to come visit that place because we may end up testing and going over the water wading limits of both. So that's something we don't want to do in this uh, review. So now we're left with testing the Mu X and Terra Sport and their driving manners in the city. Now ever since we've gotten behind the wheel of the Mu X, we can't help but notice how much it has leveled up over the previous generation. The materials are much better inside, the driving position, the ergonomics, it's much better and to be honest, it's not like the typical Isuzu's of yesteryears because you know the controls are lighter there's better you know like it's more precise in the brakes and it's it feels less heavier it feels less truck like and you know now that the ride has gotten a bit firmer it's also gotten a bit more responsive to your inputs you know the steering 
is pretty good for an SUV and it's nice and responsive. But what I do really like about this MUX is its 3 liter engine. Now some of you may think because it has a big engine, it is fuel thirsty, but it's not. You know, 3 liter engine has plenty of torque down low, so you don't have to rev it as high in the city and the result of that is you get better fuel numbers. Right now, I've been averaging 9.5 kilometers per liter in the city. And that's impressive, especially for an engine in this size. And, you know, it's a big SUV. So you don't really expect those numbers coming from a PPV. And especially, it's 4x4. So you, you have more weight in front. So that affects fuel economy as well. On the highway, you average around 14 kilometers per liter. And in the highways, you also get the benefit of having the adaptive cruise control. Plus, since this one is the top of the line version, this is the top of the line model, you also get the blind spot monitoring, the lane departure warning. So it's all very much loaded in terms of features. So how will the Terra Sport compare to this one? Well, let's switch over to the Terra Sport to find out. Like the Suzu MUX, this is not our first time driving the Nissan Terra Sport. You know, the last time we were in Palawan, I was with Geloy and we went on a six hour trip from Puerto Princesa to El Nido. Those consisted of winding roads, zigzags, plus long stretches of you know paved roads. What I can truly say is that the Nissan Terra Sport is such a relaxing SUV to drive in the city and also on long distance trips. And that is because, you know, you have these zero gravity seats that hold you firmly in place and it does help in reducing um, travel fatigue. And in the city, the suspension, which is buttery smooth, absorbs you know, most of the road imperfections very well. It's not a floaty ride. It's still, the SUV remains uh, composed as you go over those bumps like what we have here in EDSA. And handling wise, you know, it's not the Terra Sport's strongest suit, but so does the rest of other SUVs because it's not really a priority in this, in this class. And for its engine, you know, the 2.5 liter engine has plenty of power. But with that said, Nissan could work on improving the transmission and the gearing in particular of the seven speed automatic transmission. You see, I think the Isuzu Mu X has an edge over the Terra Sport in that aspect. And that is because the 7 speed automatic tends to be tuned to keep the RPMs right around the 2000 to 2500 range when, before it changes gears. And that affects your fuel economy, especially here in the city. There's a big effect in terms of fuel economy. You know, up to now, I've only been doing 7.5 kilometers per liter in the city. But you know, the trade-off to that is the 7-speed automatic is better suited to long-distance driving because the extra gears give me, you know, 16 kilometers per liter. And that's actually pretty good. And because this is the top of the line TerraSport VL 4x4, you also get Nissan's intelligent mobility features. Some of them are the 360 camera, the around view monitor, and some ADAS features like blind spot monitoring, forward, forward collision warning, the rear cross traffic alert. But you only get the standard cruise control unlike the Mu X that has an adaptive one. So really, it's neck and neck between the Mu X and TerraSport in terms of features, the exterior. So which one do we pick? Well, let's go back to the warehouse and discuss a bit more, especially the pricing. We've already seen what's on the inside and the outside of both these SUVs, and we've already driven them both. But we never really talked about the pricing just yet. Well, the Nissan Terra Sport retails for just under 2.5 million pesos and the MUX retails for just above 2.5 million pesos. But at the end of the day, it's really hard to choose between both SUVs since they play their strengths very differently. And really, 
the factors that you're considering for a 4x4 SUV and the purpose you want them to do is what matters at the end. I suggest you test drive both cars and see it for yourself. Do let us know in the comments section down below what you think. This is Jamila Kuna of AutoIndustria.com. Thank you for watching.